Hi, this is Tony Sidgwick from Bahrain This Month magazine. I'm here in the stunning Royal Suite at the Sofitel Bahrain Zalek Thalassa Sea and Spa Hotel. In a moment we have joining us Graham Loden. Graham is the Sporting Director and President of the Mauritia F1 team. So let's see what Graham has to say about the upcoming 2014 Formula One World Championship. Uh, Graham, thank you for taking the time to uh, come and speak to us today. Um, so for 2014, uh, there's been a lot of rule changes, obviously. Uh, do you think the rule, ch uh, the rule changes serve to uh, even the playing field a little bit and uh, allow some of, the, some of the, the smaller teams to compete and grab some points? Well, I certainly hope so. Um, I think for a, a team like ours, you know, we're quite a new team into Formula One and therefore um, we're having to play catch up a little bit. And Formula One, is, it's the pinnacle of world motorsport. So it's not a sport that you can come into and um, instantly dominate. So, um, you know, so we, 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 play, we have to play catch up and there's probably two scenarios that would work well for us. Either uh, no change at all in the regulations, which just allows us to catch the, catch the other teams up who have been more familiar with the, the rules for a longer amount of time or an enormous change in the regulations and what we've got for 2014 is probably the biggest change in, in, a, in a decade in, in Formula One so so yes it's an opportunity but also it's a, it's a big challenge um, with the resources that we have available we have to, as a team we have to get it right first time we can't really afford to buy our way out of any problems um, so you know hopefully uh, hopefully um, the testing will will go well. That's why we're that's why we're here. So, what are Marussia's ambitions for the 2014 season? Is it is it just to grab some points, or do you actually want to try and get some podiums this year? That's a really good question, but a really difficult question to um, to answer. In in reality, I'll have to give you a call after the race in um, in in uh, in Melbourne, the first Grand Prix, because um, to be honest, until then, um, the the, the relative performance levels of the cars are so unpredictable at the moment uh, you know in fact it may even be you know by the time we get to race here in Bahrain um, a few races into the championship before things are starting to become clear and certainly from a from a management point of view we've decided not to set any hard and fast targets until we can actually see how things perform in the first race and that's really quite unusual you know normally by now in testing you'd have a, an idea and you would set some kind of targets but it's so unpredictable this year that we're going to have to uh, wait a little bit longer. Obviously the, the, the new engines for this year are very different um, V6 turbocharged uh, smaller smaller capacity um, what do you think about the new engines do you think they're going to have a big impact on their strategies and their driver strategies? I think one of the key things about these new power units is they're unbelievably complicated. Um, you know, I've, I've got an engineering degree, and yet um, some of the some of the development um, and progress that's been made in these um, in these engines is really you know astounds me. Um, as you say, it's a smaller capacity. There is still an internal combustion engine um, in there, which is which is great, a 1.6 uh, uh, V6. Um, as you said, it's uh, turbocharged now. I think the, the biggest difference the fans will will see when they turn up um, um, at a race is the is the noise is significantly different with a with a turbocharged engine. And then there are two um, motor generator units on the um, on the power unit as well, um, an MGUK which recovers kinetic energy and turns that into you know really quite significant power. So that's very similar to the KERS unit that people have seen um, um, throughout um, throughout last year. And then there's a MGUT which recovers thermal energy and helps spin up the, the turbo. And um, you know, this is just the, the optimization of all three elements um, and also the battery or energy store as it's, um, it tends to be called. Um, the, the optimization of that is, is actually going to play a major part in, in the racing. So again, it's another reason why Qualifying in, in, in the first few Grand Prix won't actually tell the whole story. The whole story is going to be told by how people execute the races them, themselves. And, uh, uh, and I think it's going to be intriguing to see if teams get the strategies right. You know, it, it's, uh, it is a team game um, at the end of the day. And so the engineers are, uh, play a very important role as well as, as, well, of course, as the, as the drivers. And I think you know, this season, more than, more than any in recent past, is, is going to be incredibly unpredictable and you know, hopefully very exciting for the fans because ultimately you know, it, this, that's what this sport's all about. 
about the about the the company and the team itself. Um, I mean, Man, Man and Motorsports has been in uh, been in the, the game for a while, but it's only recently moved into F1. Uh, was this a case of a, a natural progression, or was it an ambition on your part to uh, you wanted to be at the the top level of motorsports? I think it's fair to say it's always been an ambition, but it wasn't a natural progression because it's such an unnatural thing to be able to do to to bring a team into Formula One. It, it, you know, if we if we take the clock back. 30, 40 years, and that's what used to happen. You know, people used to, to come up through the, the ranks, both drivers and teams, and, the, and you know, Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsport, so that was where every driver wanted to be and every team wanted to be. Um, that changed a lot, in, um, certainly in the last 20 years, and it became almost impossible um, to take your team into Formula One. So for us, the, the, the real opportunity is when... The, the world governing body, the FIA, made some um, very bold and, uh, and I think very correct steps to to introduce cost-saving measures into the formula, and all of a sudden it made it made sense. And as soon as we saw that there was that opportunity there, then you know we knew it was going to be a window of opportunity that perhaps wouldn't happen again. And so um, you know we we uh, we pulled a small small group of people together and uh, and were successful in, in taking Manor into Formula One, which you know it was a great achievement and and uh, really a testament to the to the group of people who who worked so hard to um, um, to do it and then allowed us to to expand the team you know into into what it is now which is really a, a, a team to be very proud of and um, as for Marisha itself uh, the um, obviously there's a reason they invested in the team and there's a reason they got involved with uh, with with Formula One um, I mean, how do you translate and uh, measure invol uh, well, Marussia's involvement into off-track success? Well, how, how does it benefit the company outside of Formula One? I think as a, uh, you know, one of the attributes of, of Formula One is it is, you know, it, it, it really is an enormous global sport. It has a reach into countries and territories where we don't, where we don't race. If you host a Grand Prix, then everyone will know um, uh, will know the name of uh, of, of, of the uh, the venue that hosts hosts the Grand Prix, and uh, you know that doesn't you know that kind of global reach is really important for anybody bringing new brands um, to market. It's an incredibly powerful um, uh, marketing tool from that point of view. You know, but also there's an um, there's an engineering element um, as well, and uh, you know the levels of engineering and research and design that are undertaken by Formula One teams like ourselves are incredibly high, and um, and so there are spin-offs for, you know, certainly for um, road car manufacturers and 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 also the companies that um, are involved with with um, with technology, which 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 is pretty every pretty much every company um, uh, nowadays. Um, so I think it's that combination really of the uh, you know the global reach is a really powerful um, platform to develop any brand um, and also the um, the engineering um, element as well there are just so many aspects of um, of development and research that we carry out in Formula One that have a relevance on um, on uh, on road cars as, and especially sports cars where there's a performance element and especially where we're pushing um, technological boundaries in certain areas so you know it provides Mauritius with a um, with a gateway into all of that technology and the ability to tap into um, both areas of you know areas of research and also quite key is also the you know the p people as well you know a lot of this knowledge is embodied in in uh, in engineers young engineers and so there's a, the ability to transfer technology from the track um, to the road and it's that's really quite um, that's really quite a, a rare thing to be able to do there's only 11 Formula One teams in the world and um, so Mauritius have access to one of them. Your background is quite diverse. You've, uh, you're a successful entrepreneur and businessman. You have a number of companies behind you, but your interests always seem to come back to motorsports. Why is that? Uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, I've got the bug, and you know, um, um, you know, hopefully, a lot of your readers and viewers will feel, you know, will feel the same thing. It's it's nice to be passionate about something, and uh, um, you know, you're quite right. I'm I'm a businessman. I understand um, that. Uh, uh, the role I have um, within the team is, is, you know, it's important for us to to build a business. Um, I, you know, I had a, a career originally in the electrical power generation um, uh, industry. In fact, my first visit to Bahrain would have been probably about 25 years ago, 
um, I came out to visit Alba um, and looked at um, lots of power generation and aluminium facilities um, out of here and, and it, was a, it was a visit that left a very big impression upon me. It was the first time I'd been um, uh, to the region and um, you know, I found it absolutely, absolutely fascinating. Bahrain has changed an awful lot in in, in 25 years, um, but I guess so have I. I've got, <laughs> I've got a bit older. Um, but yeah, I always had, you know, I had, I'd got a fascination really and, and a love of cars from my father, and um, and really carried that through. And then when I had the opportunity to. Um, to see professional racing team in action, which was uh, quite a long time ago now in, in uh, IndyCar, we were involved in some sponsorship, and that really confirmed to me that I wanted to build a career in that in that area. So, um, uh, so I set up uh, together with uh, with my wife uh, a racing team, and um, and we developed that team, and we actually raced against Manor, and um, they used to beat us quite a lot, and so in the end we joined. Uh, this was in Formula Renault in the late 90s, mid mid to late 90s, and um, and then eventually um, we joined forces with um, uh, with John and Mary Booth who run um, Manor, and never you know never looked back since. You know, uh, really fa fantastic team, uh, very successful, won a lot of races and a lot of championships, and. Um, and have played a role in in the careers of a lot of drivers on the on the grid now. You know, people like Lewis Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen all drove for Manor, and so the team itself has a has a really uh, you know really great heritage. And it was a, a massive honour really to, to 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 be able to bring the bring the team. And, and you know, we're very much a racing team. That's very much the DNA of of, um, of the team. And it was a real honour to to be able to you know bring that. Um, you know, bring that racing spirit into into Formula One. Great. Well, uh, that just about wraps it up, Graham. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us, and uh, I wish Marussia all the best for 2014. It's great to see new teams coming in, and uh, hope that you uh, sort of bring the fight to the bigger teams and uh, give them some bloody noses uh, at a couple of times throughout the season.